All right, so let's look at problem six on homework 8A. And here we have a sample of 10 hummingbirds, and we're given a sample standard deviation, so x bar is the sample, not the population. And then we know based on other studies that we have a population standard deviation of 0.4 grams. And I know you've been out of school for a while, but remember that when we have a Greek letter, it refers to a population parameter. And when the letter is one of our letters, then we, it's a sample statistic. So x bar is for the sample, sigma is for the population. I like to take this data and move everything into Excel and sort it as nicely as possible. So it's asking me to find an 80% confidence interval for the average weights of Allen's hummingbirds in the study region. What is the margin of error? So we're looking for a um, point estimate of the mean, and we know that that's always going to be the same as the sample mean. And then we're going to look at how far to either side do we go for an 80% confidence interval. So I'm going to flip on over to Excel. And I've started with all the words to the problem. I've written those down so I can see things easily. I break these into two boxes. So I create a box for the sample, and then I create a box for the population. I'll do these for all problems for the next couple chapters because this makes it easier for me to understand. So what do I know about the sample? Well, they've told me that the sample is 3.15 grams. I don't know the standard deviation for the sample. I do know N for the sample. I don't know anything about the population except that the standard deviation for the whole population is 0.4. What can we do with what the information with the information that we're given? The first problem is that n is less than 30. So can I assume normality? Well, I don't have to because it told me that I had a normal distribution. Okay, so I've got the underlying distribution as normal, so my sample size doesn't matter. So I can move forward. Um, the other pieces that would matter here. Uh, Sample size, normal distribution. I have the population standard deviation, so I'm good to go when I have a normal distribution with the population standard, devi standard deviation. It told me that I wanted a confidence interval of 0.8. I always go ahead and write down, even though we're not going to use it, that means my alpha value is 0.2. What this means in terms of a normal curve, if I have my normal curve, standard normal curve, where the entire area underneath it is 1, I have these two critical values, zc and negative zc. And so my critical values between the two lies 80%. So because it's symmetric, 40% lies between 0 and the left one, 40% lies between 0 and the right one. If I were going to look up what value gives me ZC, I would have to think, well, how much is to the left of the critical value? Right? So to the left of ZC, well, I've got 80% in the red. And if I keep on going, I have 10% more. So that gives me 90% total. So when I'm looking up the critical value right here, I have a standard normal curve, so norm.s inverse, because I'm starting with a percentage and I'm going backwards. So what value of zc gives me 90% to the left? That's what I'm looking at there. And so 90% to the left, I put that in, and I get 1.28. All right, so that's easy. Now, the formula in the book, which is yucky, e is equal to the critical value times the standard deviation of the population, because it's a Greek letter, divided by the square root of the sample size. Now this is easy. The critical value is 1.28, I just found that, times F7, that's a sample standard, excuse me, that's a population standard deviation, divided by the square root of 10. Simple. And then to find the lower and upper limits of my confidence interval, I start with a sample mean, which we use as a point estimate for the population mean. And so I say the mean minus the error, and then the mean plus the error. So the lower limit is the mean, 3.15 minus 0.16. The upper limit is the mean plus 0.16. And I'm all good. So I find the error first, and then I find the lower and upper limits. Your book always puts them in a weird order. This can be a much simpler problem. If you use Excel, suppose I have a group of, so same problem, okay? I can do it in three easy steps. All I need to do for E is say find the confidence.norm, and it's going to prompt me. It wants the alpha value first, that's 0.2. Alpha value is just the confidence interval, 1 minus the confidence interval size, so 0.2. Then the standard deviation of the population, which is 0.4, and then the sample size, which is 10. That gives me E. So confidence, not norm, gives me the whole thing. 
and then I'm just saying 3.15 minus the error, 3.15 plus the error. So it's literally 3.15 minus that, 3.15 plus that. This is a whole lot simpler than doing it the way that the book does it. They both give you the same exact answers. The last part of the question asks us to find the sample size necessary for an 80% confidence interval with the maximal margin of error of E equals 0.07 for the mean weights of the hummingbirds. This one's not hard. If you look at the formula that we just used for E, which was the critical value of Z times the standard deviation divided by the square root of N, if I solve that for N, so I multiply both sides by N, I divide both sides by E, and then I square both sides, that gives me N equals the critical value of Z times sigma over E, square the whole thing. I won't make you do that on the test. You can just use that formula. Um, but you've got this formula here, and then you just need to plug in the values. So they've given me the value for E is 0.07. I knew that the critical value was 1.28 from up here. And then um, sigma they gave me was 0.4. And E, they gave me that. So I'm just plugging in the critical value. So I went up there and highlighted the purple one. So the critical value times sigma, which I got from up here, divided by uh, n, no, divided by e, which they told me was 0.07. So they said that in the question, e is 0.07. Take all of that, put it in parentheses, and then square everything in the parentheses. So I get 53.62. And what this means is if I study 53.6 hummingbirds, then that will be, that will be enough. It tells me to round up, uh, which you would do here most likely when it said nearest whole number because you'd round up to 54. But even if it was 53.2, you can't use two tenths of a hummingbird. You're not going to be able to observe it if you cut it up into little pieces because it de it's dead. So you want to just always, if you're dealing with a live creature here, we're going to always have to round it up to the next number and we'd use 54 in this case. So the answer would be 54 hummingbirds. Uh, is what we would need to get a margin of error, a maximal margin of error of 0.07.